In this episode of Velocity Labs, we're going to be fabricating a custom downpipe for our Twin Scroll HX35. And by we, I mean Willie's going to do it. All right, here we go, part three. Part four is going to be out in two weeks, but for now, let's head to Willie's. All right, here we go. We are at Willie's shop to do the turbo swap. Oh, and first up, here's the last sound of the exhaust with the stock size turbo on it. And while Willie's working on his 1991 Talon drag car, we're going to be tearing apart the Eclipse so he can fabricate us a downpipe. Oh, and just look at this thing. It is pretty amazing. Full tubular front end, massive turbo, carbon fiber doors, carbon fiber hatch, carbon fiber hood, all the high speed goodies. And like Willie says, he's shooting for 11s in the quarter mile with this build. Ah, uh, yeah. Anyway, back to the teardown on my car. We need to remove just about everything related to the turbo. We're starting with the stock 1G intake snorkel and the 2G mass airflow sensor on the car. Once those two are out, we can remove the blow off valve recirculation line. Yes, I know we kind of already showed this part in the speed density upgrade, but I kind of shot these out of order. Anyway, next we'll remove the factory heat shields. So what's your goal for the mile wise? Uh, I'd like to hit a high 11. We'll see. What do you got for a clutch? Uh, the center force dual friction. Okay. This might be a little bit much for that. Maybe. We'll find out. Yeah. <laughs> I've never really heard. I know they work on it. In other cars, I don't know if anyone has experience. Um, oh, oh, Road Race oh, Engineering, oh. Uh, in California. Yeah. They have a post about it and they're like, yeah, as long as you're not hot lapping it. Oh, okay. And uh, they said, yeah, it should be good to have four to 500 horsepower. So I'm like, all right, Hell yeah. we'll find out. Yep. <laughs> if not, we try to recruit this. I know you love yours. <laughs> I love me. <laughs> I loved it on the, uh, the Synchro Trans. Yeah. I hated it on the dog box. You get all that stack up the slop and the straight cut gears and then yeah. the twin disc to it. And it was a disaster to try to drive on the street. When you're banging gears, it's nothing better. Yeah. Try to drive it on the human. Because you're, you're gunning it everywhere. You have to. Yep. Yeah, it's But not many people with it. Once all the heat shields are off, we'll pull the J-pipe off next. Now, I just did a turbo swap video a couple months ago, so check that out if you want a more detailed breakdown of this process. But basically, we just remove the water lines and then we drain the coolant, drain the oil, uh, disconnect the downpipe, disconnect the oil lines, take all the nuts off the manifold, and then we can remove the entire manifold and turbo assembly as one piece. Assuming you get everything. And here it is out of the car. The only thing that we're gonna be using from this setup is my O2 sensor for my wideband. Everything else is gonna get switched. And here's the space that we have to work with. Oh, and see the oil dipstick tube? Yeah, that's the last time that it's gonna be there in the stock location. It's gonna get bent way off to the side. You'll see that later. Willie is going to need as much room as we can possibly give him so we can work his downpipe fabrication magic. So we're going to pop out the lower intercooler piping so the bumper needs to come off next. But first, let's do a quick test fit of the manifold since I've never done that before. And already we have problems. Remember what I said about the dipstick like 30 seconds ago? Yep, it's bending time. And since I don't have a bending unit handy, we're gonna have to do it ourselves. I had to bend it quite a bit to make the manifold work and we'll be bending it even more again later on uh, when it comes to getting the dump tubes from the wastegates fabricated and installed. Oh yeah, that looks awesome. Check out the previous video if you wanna see the heat wrapping process. That is an unwieldy bitch. <laughs> Okay, enough ogling. Let's get that front end off. 
We're also going to pull the radiator out to give us maximum room for activities. The exhaust gasket that I ordered was a little bit small for our 3 inch downpipe flange, so Willie made quick work of it with the grinder while I was pulling the bumper off. While he was working on the downpipe, I looped the factory turbo water lines together since we won't be using them with the HX35. It's oil cooled only. I did that by loosening up the lines and then chopping off the eye bolt connection on the lower line and then simply running a hose between the two. While I was working on that, Willie was getting the turbine housing ready, and even on the workbench you start to realize that there isn't going to be a lot of space to work with. Gee, I can't imagine why. There's not going to be a lot of room in there, is there? No. <laughs> I mean, right now it looks like there's going to be a ton of room in here, but you got to realize that there's no radiator, there's no fans, there's no intercooler piping, there's no turbo, no manifold, just a big empty bay. Well, kind of empty. It's really nothing compared to the talent sitting behind me. I can't wait to see this thing back up and running again. Once we're sure that everything fits, we can pull the flange off so Willie can start mocking up the downpipe. And I can open the wastegates and get those ready. A little disclaimer here and uh, a note from the future, these aren't real tiles. Sorry tile. I didn't like going with knockoff Chinese parts, but I'm already way over budget on this build, and this is an expensive build for me. So I had to make some sacrifices, and two real tiles would have been about $560, and I got two fake ones shipped from China for $110. Just a note, I actually ended up having to get real tiles, and uh, you'll see that in the next episode. But anyway, my thought with these was, even if they fail, they'll fail open, meaning I won't be able to build boost which isn't really gonna break anything, so there's very low risk involved with these. Anyway, you'll see why I swapped them out for real tiles in the next episode, and uh, also I'll be doing a cost breakdown of this build in a later video so you can see what an upgrade like this will cost. Okay, test fit time again with the turbine housing on. And it's already low enough that it's hitting the factory downpipe. Well, actually this is a three inch Megan Racing downpipe, but it sits in the exact stock location, so basically the same. Ooh. Yeah, we're gonna have to chop that down pipe. <laughs> Take a good chunk off that thing. Yeah. Either way, a big chunk of the downpipe is going to need to get chopped. So I'll pull that off next while Willie starts making pie. Well, pie cuts anyway. We're going to need to change the stock downpipe flange to fit our new downpipe. So we're going with a V-band setup. We chopped the stock flange off my 3-inch Megan Racing downpipe and then switched it to a V-band connector. The new downpipe that Willie is making from pie cuts will mate up to the new V-band setup. In order to keep the exhaust flowing smoothly while avoiding all the obstacles in my engine bay, the downpipe is going to have bends on multiple axes. 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 Whatever. It's going to twist and turn like a drunk python trying to have sex with a slinky. And lots of pie cuts are going to be what makes that happen. This is where I gotta point out that it's amazing to know somebody like Willie. There's no bolt-on part that will make this work, and this level of fabrication is light years beyond what I'm capable of. I literally couldn't have done it without him. And just uh, an editing note, while I'm watching all this footage while I'm editing this video together, I realize that Willie has so much experience doing this that he's essentially eyeballing this process. I didn't realize it while he was doing it, but he just took some basic measurements, looked at the start and end location of where the downpipe needed to be, and just said to himself, I got this, and, started, and just started making multiple pie cuts, and when they were all tacked together, it fit perfectly aligned to where they needed to be. I mean, just look at all these cuts. Different angles, different sizes, and they all fit together perfectly in the blueprint that was in Willie's head. Just outstanding. You can see here that we just can't do a 90 degree bend down because of where the oil filter sits. So it has to come forward and then curve back down around to miss the front cross beam. In order to give us a little extra room, we're also switching from a 1G DSM oil filter to a 2G yeah. DSM oil filter, which is going to give us a bit more room to work with. Once all that's done, the pieces are tacked together and then Willie starts welding them up. This is a good shot where you can clearly see the compound curve going on with the downpipe. It's pretty cool. Okay, so how do you 
Again, I am dumbfounded how fast he put this together. The test fit was so brief that I didn't even get a good shot of it. He's just like, oh, perfect, got it, and started welding it up. Oh, and while Willie was doing that incredibly simple and menial task of creating a compound curved downpipe out of thin air, I was doing complicated, more important things like screwing in the 3 4 inch barb to the oil return line. I could try explain this process to you guys, but it's likely that it's too advanced for most of you anyway. Anyway, he welded up all of the V-band flanges, welded up all of the multiple pie cuts, he welded the bung for the O2 sensor, he created a new flange for the stock downpipe to connect everything to, and, uh, and I, uh, I cut the stock oil return line and connected a hose to it. I'm helping. Oh, and I also changed over the O2 sensor from the stock housing over to the newly fabricated downpipe and got the oil feed connector ready. So yeah, totally helping. Seriously though, I felt a little useless here. Anyway, there was a bunch more test fitting to get everything lined up. The turbo had to be reclocked a little bit. The intercooler piping had to be messed with to make it fit. The radiator wouldn't fit with the way that I had the fan set up. Uh, so before this, I had a full-size stock fan on the passenger side and then a slim fan on the driver's side with the, uh, the td 520 g setup that I had. And uh, we quickly realized that I'm definitely gonna need to go with two slim fans and I might even have to go with a pusher setup because uh, I could not fit uh, the full-size fan on the passenger side anymore. There just wasn't enough room. I might even have to go with a pusher setup, but uh, it was getting late, so I just left the stock one off for now and just ran one fan to get it home. I'll be redoing the fan and the intercooler piping setup in the next video. For now, I just needed to get it back together to get the car home for the night and get out of Willie's hair. The oil return line needed a little extra clearance next to the front motor mount, so that had to get ground down to make that work. And it turned out that the oil return hose that I had ordered wasn't flexible enough to make the bend required. So it ended up having a little bit of a kink in it. So we'll have to fix that when we get home as well. But it was good enough to drive home though, so I'll be addressing that in the next video as well. While I got the manifold and the turbo bolted down and started reassembling the front end, Wheelie got the wastegates clamped on and then fabricated the dump pipes. Once again, real estate in the engine bay was very quickly becoming a scarce commodity. So the dump pipes needed to have some sneaky bends in them to make sure that they fit properly. But once again, Willie made this look easy. Also, speed density wasn't completely set up at this time, so I just clamped the mass airflow sensor directly onto the turbo inlet just to get me home. I just made sure to baby at home and stayed out of boost so it wasn't a big deal. After that, I got the front end put back together. Willie finished up both the dump pipes. We got the exhaust hooked back up and, uh, and then it was time to head home. All right, that was a long day, but uh, I had a lot of fun. Next video is out in two weeks. We're gonna be putting the finishing touches on everything, getting the intake installed, getting the cooling system and fans worked out, and uh, then we're gonna finally hear this thing run.